What is going on everybody, you got Tone here, the coach of the Miami Mallon Marlins, and I am back bringing you guys my team builder for week number one of the PLC, the, um, the um, Pokemon League Championship is here. Um, if you guys missed my draft analysis, the link will be in the description down below. Feel free to check that out at your, dis at your pleasure. And we are going to be heading into this week one battle against VideoCam22, coach of the Durham Grambles, in a pretty interesting matchup to say the least. And I'm actually very, very excited for this um, for this battle, considering it's my first league battle in a while. Um, it's my first Wi-Fi league battle in about two months, so trying to shake off the rust as it may be so uh, the matchup should pop up on the screen at some point during the recording but um, if you guys do remember my team it is Celesteela which is my Z captain Garchomp, Megalopony, Infernape, Alolan Muck, Diancy, Rotomo, Mesprit, Seismitoad, Tauros, and Glalie and my opponent has at his disposal a team of Blacephalon, which is his Z Captain, Mega Altaria, Starmie, Scizor, Swampert, Torkoal, Crobat, Galvantula, Leafeon, Kangaskhan, and Passimian. So, a couple of things to note about um, my opponent's team. Uh, first and foremost, despite the fact that my opponent does have access to Sun with Torkoal plus Blacephalon, it has actually. Blacephalon by itself. What's a major pain um, during prep and in the mock battles? And not going to lie, I was this it was probably the one Pokemon I did not want to see heading into this matchup, especially coming back in the league format. So, uh, Blacephalon is a very scary mod. Even scarier is the fact that he has webs at his disposal. And if I don't get rid of, if I don't keep webs off my side of the field, then Blacephalon is going to have pretty much a field day against my team. The saving grace, however, is the fact that I do have two, at least two Pokemon that can reliably switch, take at least one attack from Blacephalon, although, albeit it can't switch in, especially considering that the sun is going to be coming into effect. Um, one of them being my Alolan Muck, and the other one being my Diancy. Everything else, I can... I can pretty much pressure the Blacephalon offensively, but it just comes down to... Um, picking and choosing my spots because, like I said, Blacephalon is a very, very tough mod to switch into. And even with the fact that I have the um, the ability to pressure Blacephalon offensively, um, at the same time, Blacephalon can pressure me offensively. So it comes down to whether or not um, it basically comes down to who can pressure who first with their um, key mods. So. Uh, a couple other things that can be a little bit annoying. Uh, Mega Altaria, if I let it set up, like a Dragon Dance or something, can be a little bit problematic, um, albeit I do have a Celesteela in the back, so um, if he does decide to bring Dragon Dance, I think he would have to bring like Flamethrower as like a lore, or he just brings like a special variant of Alt Mega Altaria with like Hyper Voice and Flamethrower, some coverage along the, um, that line. Um... As for the rest of his team, it's kind of hard to say. Um, Crobat, I know for sure is coming, um, just because of the fact that um, Crobat can lead off against my team, and if I lead Lopany and I go for Fake Out, it can be inner focus, and then he kills me with a Brave Bird. I don't want that to happen. Um, uh, and the last thing to note is the fact that his electric resists are Mega Altaria, Galvantula, and Swampert, but. Um, Swampert is really the only thing that prevents my Rotom from Volt Switching for free. At the same time, Swampert is af afraid of getting hit by a Leaf Storm. So, I can use that to my advantage and try to get a situation where Rotom can come in and pretty much try to get generate momentum with Volt Switch or try to get rid of hazards, specifically Sticky Webs, on my side of the field if he does get bring the Galvantula in this matchup. So, uh, I actually had to play him again, so... This makes this team builder a little bit more tricky because of the fact that I have to prep for this again. Um, our teams might, might be the same by the next time we battle, so um, we'll see what happens. But that's in the future. We're doing deal with the past, with the um, current, um, the present right now. So in terms of what I expected him to bring in this battle, um, Blacephalon, 
well, from a main, from a main standpoint, that's the six I predicted was uh, Blacephalon, Mega Altaria, Swampert, Torkoal, Crobat, Galvantula. If I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't see him bringing Scizor. I did make sure that Scizor was accounted for because I know Scizor doesn't really have that much of a good matchup considering that I can bring fire coverage for days on pretty much almost everything on my team. Like Celesteela, it gets hard stopped by Celesteela. The best thing you can do is U-turn. <coughs> um, Scythe Mateo can check it with bolt resist by resisting bullet punch and all that stuff, so... Yeah, it's not really looking good for um, Scizor. Starmie is a possibility just in case he fears um, Hazard Stack on my side with um, the combination of any Stealth Rocker of my choosing plus Glalie, but Glalie doesn't have a good matchup in general, so... No hazard stacking option this time around. So, with that all being said, I'm just going to hop right into the team builder and see what we decided to bring for our week one matchup. And week one starts with our cell with Omega our Celesteela here. Uh, initially, the Celesteela was physical, but after doing some mock battles, we I decided to change it to special just because I did have a better matchup against his team from an offensive standpoint. Pretty much it's everything on his team neutrally. Um, the fact that I don't have Flamethrower to hit the Scizor is fine because Scizor itself doesn't want to stay in fearing the Flamethrower. Uh, and oh, the other thing I forgot to mention is the fact that he doesn't really have a Flying Resist either, so Air Slash is pretty free against his team. And then we have Flash Cannon to hit the Mega Altaria. And Giga Drain is here for the Starmie and for the Swampert. Um, as for my investment, we're running max special attack, modest nature, hit as hard as possible. Uh, 156 speed is enough to outspeed uh, max speed Crobat after an autonomized boost and everything slower than that. And the rest of this put the HP to give Cell Steel us some bulk. And if we have um, Fly and EMZ to fire off a powerful Super Saiyan Sky Strike because, like I said, he has no flying resist on his team. So. If I get into a situation where I can click Super Sonic Sky Strike, I will go for it. Uh, but essentially, this is going to try me my winning con in this game, but I just have to be careful of the Blacephalon and the Torkoal and whatnot. So, that is our Celesteela. Next up, or the T, we have our Deante, which is going to be my primary switch into the Blacephalon. So,. We have Stealth Rock, um, Dual Stab, and Toxic with Leftovers. Uh, kind of wish... I was kind of going back and forth with this one between writing Leftovers and like a 50% 50, a 50 Berry on Deante just in case uh, Deante gets too low. I can want to have that Pitch Berry to get back to a reasonable amount of health, but it is what it is. Uh, the main job for Deante is to come in on Blacephalon, take the fire attacks, uh, scare it out with Power Gem. I also have Moon Blast here to hit the Mega Altaria super effectively. This can't touch Scizor, but then again, like I said, I have enough on my team to pressure Scizor to the point where I don't really feel pressured by Scizor at the very least by not bringing uh, Hidden Power Fire on my DNC. Uh, Toxic just felt like a better move to um, have here just to wear out stuff like Swamper, stuff like Torkoal, stuff. Uh, Pretty much his bulkier stuff that can take hits from my physical attackers. Uh, mainly the Torkoal, the Swapper, and the Mega Altaria. So, easy spread, very straightforward. Max special, the uh, max HP, max special defense. Uh, calm nature, take the special attacks from the Blacephalon, from the Galvantula, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, that's pretty much it for the DNC. Pretty straightforward uh, in its role and what it's designed to be doing for my team. So next up afterwards, we have our Megalopity here, which is, again, a very straightforward set here. Fake out, return, fire punch, and quick attack. Didn't really need to bring any coverage options in this game because if you see his team, his only... The only Pokemon on his team that's weak to fighting is the Kangaskhan, which I can already pressure with uh, return and whatnot. Uh, Fire Punch is just here for the Scizor, and everything else is just pretty straightforward here. Fake out for the chip damage, for um, residual chip damage on Scarfers and whatnot. Return for Stab, 
uh, Fire Punch I already covered, I already mentioned for the Scizor, and Quick Attack for more priority to pick off uh, frail threats like the Blacephalon. Uh, the EV spread, again, very straightforward. Max attack, enough speed to outrun max speed Jolly Crobat. And everything slower than that, and the rest is put into HP to give it some slightly more bulk. So, I think a lot of the essentially is going to be coming in and clicking to fake out uh, more often than not. Um, and a little bit, a little less prominent now with the, um, the speed boost with the uh, Mega Evolution and all that stuff, but... Uh, we're getting fake out, getting fake out damage on stuff like potential scarfs. Um, I don't really know what he would scarf in his case on his team. It's kind of hard to say. Like the only thing I can see potentially being scarfed is either the Blacephalon or the Pasimian, to be perfectly honest. But other than that, um, just having quick attack is nice for the um for the chip damage and just in case I can out prioritize priority moves so it's pretty cool to have. Um, so that is my Megalopony. Then we move on to the pretty much uh, hard hitters of the team starting off with our Infernape with the Life Orb, Fire Blast, Earthquake, Gunk Shot, and Grass Knot. Um, so the idea with Infernape is to come in, hit everything on his team as hard as possibly can. Um, Fire Blast is here over like Flare Blitz to avoid taking any extra recoil from uh, recoil from the Flare Blitz plus the Life Orb recoil uh, would really wear down my Infernape extremely extremely hard. Uh, Earthquake is here from the Blacephalon mainly. Uh, Gunk Shot to a KO's Mega Altaria and Grass Knots there specifically. It's mainly there for Swampert, but it also had Starby too. On the switch, so that's that is my infernate the EV spread here. Max speed, naive nature, so I can outspeed uh, max speed non scarf Blacephalon. Uh, <coughs> 76 EVs and special attack ensures that uh, fire blast from my infernate to a KOs in max HP, max defense, uh, bold nature Torkoal. Because if I do see Torkoal, which I am very likely expecting, it's definitely going to be physically defensive for my Megalopony. <coughs> Sorry about that. And the rest is put into attack. I probably could have swapped it a little bit, but I just wanted to ensure that Gunk Shot, Two Shot, and Mega Altaria. If it's like a bulkier version of Mega Altaria, I could have a better chance to KO it, like I said. And Earthquake, I didn't really care much for the attack investment, just enough to make sure that it one-shots um, the Blacephalon, so that's pretty much it. In terms of my Infernape, just gonna come in and just be my hard hitter on the team. Um, and now we get to the the revenge killers, so to speak. First one being our Choice Scarf Garchomp with Outrage, Earthquake, Pointed Jab, and Dragon Claw. Uh, I did contemplate a little bit with the last move. Instead of putting Dragon Claw, I considered putting some like Fire Fang. Just to have the extra coverage for Scizor, but I didn't want to over prep for one Pokemon that most likely won't be coming. <coughs> um, so yeah, this is a more bulkier uh, Garchomp here. Adamant Nature with enough speed to outrun a Jolly Max Speed Mega Altaria. And everything slower than that, Max Attack, Adamant Nature, hit as hard as possible I possibly can. Um, what and the rest has put the HP to give Garchomp some bulk. Uh, once the Mega Altar is out the way and he doesn't bring Scizor, then I can freely say I'm outraged with my Garchomp, which is very, very nice. Um, the only thing that would suck though is if he, um, if he does manage to get web sucked by Galvantula, that's gonna be put me in a little bit of a, of, of a pickle, but. Um, if I keep webs away, if I keep rocks off the field to avoid any necessary chip damage, then Garchomp can put in some work, um, depending on what he decides to bring himself. So, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for my Garchomp here. Just a uh, solid revenge killer with Choice Scarf. And pretty much the only thing better than having one Choice Scarfer is probably having another one. So, we have Choice Scarf Rotom Mo here to finish off the team here with Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Defog, and Hidden Power Ice. I was kind of on the fence with the last move. Uh, originally, I did have Leaf Storm on over Hidden Power Ice, but Leaf Storm only hit the Swampert. And under normal circumstances, Swampert won't be staying in on a motor mode fairing getting hit by Leaf Storm. So I figured Hidden Power Ice would be a lot better to get more damage off on 
Mega Altaria or Altaria pre Mega Evolution. Uh, plus, it also prevents Mega Altaria from getting a free turn of setup if I get if I didn't bring Leaf Storm. And Defog is primarily there to make sure that webs are not a factor in my game, um, as webs do hinder my entire team except for the Chris, except for the Celesteela and my Deancey. Everything else on my team and my Rotom is grounded and is really going to be hindered if webs are up. So I wanted to make sure that um, I had some way of getting rid of webs if he decides to bring it, hence my run of Mo. Um, choice Scarf because I want to be able to outspeed stuff like Crobat. Like I said, I don't really feel like uh, the Swampert. Um, Swampert could come, but at the same time, I don't think Swampert won't stay in on Rota Mo, at least it shouldn't be initially, because I could be bluffing, at the same time I could be bluffing Choice Scarf, and then hit him with a Leaf Storm, that will put him in a very, very bad spot, because with Swapper gone, I can then freely Volt Switch, it's one less check to my Megalopony, so, and one less check to my Garchomp, so, it makes it a lot easier for me in the long run if he does let his, um, Swapper take any necessary damage, so, that's pretty much it, uh, Eevee Spread, Pretty much the same as Garchomp's max special attack, enough speed to outrun, max speed Jolly Mega Altaria, and the rest is put into HP for some added bulk. So yeah, that's going to be the team builder for week one of the PLC. I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did, leave a like, uh, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And the battle will be going up on Saturday, I don't know at what time exactly, prob I'm probably, I'm going to shoot for some time at the earliest 12 o'clock on Saturday or 2 o'clock one of those two times so anyway thank you guys for watching uh, like I said if you did enjoy leave a like subscribe and all that good stuff and I'm gonna get the heck out of here and until the next time until next time guys I'm gonna catch you guys later peace out